Hi everyone, it's Miss Katie again. During our video visits, we learned so many things. First, we talked about being an audience. Do you remember what the audience job is? That's right, it's to listen and let sounds in their ears. Maybe you remember that fancy word the audience gets to say after the music's over when they're clapping. Should we do it on the count of three? One, two, three. Bravo! I bet you remember when I showed you Orchestra Hall. Do you remember what those cubes on the wall did? Yeah, they bounced sound all over that big and beautiful room so that everyone in the audience could hear. I bet you remember meeting some musicians. The first musician you met was named Greg and he played the flute. Can you hold an imaginary flute for me? And Make your fingers move up and down. Yeah, that's how Greg played the flute. The next musician you met was also named Greg, but he played the clarinet. Can you hold your imaginary clarinet for me? We hold that one this way instead of off to the side. Yeah, play some clarinet for me. After that, we met Kai, who played the bassoon. Remember that one was really big? He had to hold it off to the side and use his thumbs kind of a lot to press the keys. Try your imaginary bassoon. After that, you met Brian, who played the French horn. That was the one that was round and curled around. He had to do something really silly with his lips to make a sound, do you remember? He had to buzz them. Should we do it? <laughs> That's right, that's not what you have to do to make a sound on the French horn. Next was Rebecca, who played the smallest member of the string family. Do you remember what that one was called? Yeah, it was the violin. Can you hold your imaginary violin with me? Maybe take out your bow and slide it across those four strings. I bet you remember that Rebecca told you that you can pluck the strings too, and it's called pizzicato. Can you say that while you pretend you're plucking your string? Pizzicato. Then you met Sam, who played the viola. The viola looked a lot like the violin, but it was a little bigger, so the sounds were lower. Yeah, hold that viola in the air and play a few notes too. Next, we met Minji, who played another string instrument. Minji's instrument, the cello, was so big that she couldn't hold it under her chin. She had to rest it on the floor on her end pin, and she'd use her bow or her fingers to play her cello that way. Finally, you met Brian. Brian is a percussionist, so one thing he does is play rhythms. I'm gonna clap a rhythm to you. You clap it back. Good job. He also played the marimba, which is a percussion instrument that can play melodies or tunes. Can you take your imaginary marimba mallets and play your marimba with me? I loved how all the musicians used their instruments to make sounds like animals in the musical story. Can you think of your favorite animal sound that you heard in One Dog Canoe and whisper it right now? You got to meet the author of One Dog Canoe and you got to meet the composer who wrote the musical story for One Dog Canoe. And of course, you got to listen to that musical story, maybe more than once. Did you try acting it out as you listened? If you haven't done that, I hope you listen again and give it a try. It's been great to visit with you in these videos, and I hope to see you at Orchestra Hall soon. Bye for now.